Hi, my name is Kiara Jones and I'm a policy analyst with the Women's Initiative at the Center for American Progress. For the past few days, our research team has compiled over a hundred accounts of the devastating consequences of MAGA abortion bans. All as Republicans get ready to push a nationwide ban. I'm going to read you some of the real stories from women and doctors across the country. This is from a 35-year-old woman named Amanda who lives in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. This was the second time she had experienced a miscarriage. The hospital told her that because of Texas's abortion ban, they could not perform the procedure she needed and sent her home. She sat in the toilet digging fingernail marks on the wall from the pain. The bathtub water is just dark red, Amanda recalled. For 48 hours, it was like a constant heavy bleed and big clots. Her husband held her hand as they both cried, we are not going to try and conceive anymore, Amanda said. We don't feel like it's safe in Texas to continue to try after what we went through. This one is from Gabriella in Missouri. Walgreens initially refused medication to a woman facing serious miscarriage complications because of the state's abortion ban. Gabriella said, the pharmacist at Walgreens told me she couldn't give it to me if I was pregnant. I was able to stutter out that I was having a miscarriage and she gave it to me. I couldn't help but cry in front of all the people at Walgreens because I felt like I was being treated like a bad person. Madison from Tennessee said, they're just going to let me die. She remembers wondering after doctors denied her an abortion after suffering her second miscarriage. This is from Dr. Abigail Cutler, an OBGYN at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. To have my hands tied and not be able to help a person in front of me is devastating. Here's one about a new law creating confusion for a hospital and couple dealing with fatal fetal abnormality. Isabel from Arizona said, it was not ever the intent to end my baby's life. This has caused a huge emotional toll on myself and my family. The pain has been exponential with having to deal with the red tape. A pharmacist asked for proof of miscarriage after a woman in Kentucky tried to get medication. Meredith said she burst into tears and replied, I don't know how to prove that I'm having a miscarriage. To be questioned at the most vulnerable time in my life, Meredith said, it was just a unique kind of cruelty that no person should have to experience. Nancy from Louisiana was denied care after a fetal diagnosis and was forced to continue a dangerous pregnancy. She said, I had to carry my baby to bury my baby. In Ohio, two sisters, ages 10 and 13, were raped and impregnated by the same perpetrator. Under Ohio's old law, the younger girl was able to get an in-state abortion, but her sister, who was too far along to get one, traveled to Pennsylvania for the procedure. Marlena from Texas was forced to carry a dead fetus for two weeks after an abortion ban. I feel like it's very dangerous for a government of any type to be intervening in a woman's care because there's multiple reasons of why she may need a procedure. I felt like a walking coffin, she said, fighting through the tears. You're just walking around knowing that you have something that you hoped was going to be a baby for you, and it's gone, and you're just walking around carrying it. In Texas, a 25-year-old woman was denied abortion after doctors found fatal fetal abnormalities and severely high blood pressure and high liver enzymes. Her mother says when they asked doctors just how sick she needed to be to have an abortion, she said, we were told basically a liver failure, basically a stroke, basically a 911 call. Kaylee, a former pro-life Texas woman, had to flee to New Mexico for abortion care. I've never felt more betrayed by a place I was once so proud to be from. Elizabeth from Texas says, at 19 weeks, my water unexpectedly broke. After we arrived at the ER, it was made clear to us that our daughter, Theodora, would not survive this pregnancy. Our hospital refused to allow our doctor to perform the medically necessary abortion and instead discharged me, instructing us to return when my infection worsened. 
During this time, I experienced a consistent flow of amniotic fluid draining from my body. This was a constant reminder of my baby's impending death. Dr. Crow in Wisconsin talks about a woman denied abortion care after her water broke at 18 weeks and was at risk of a potentially lethal infection and sepsis. To be a doctor in that position, then to be in the situation where you're uncertain, you think, will the hospital let me do this? Will the DA go after me and I end up fined or in jail? It's this feeling of helplessness and utter confusion for everyone involved. Dr. Akers in Tennessee. If you provide life-saving medical care and that care is a termination, you are committing a crime. And if you don't perform that care and that patient dies, you're going to get sued for malpractice, among other things. You are in the proverbial rock in a hard place. In Texas, a woman with blood clots in her lungs because of her pregnancy asked five doctors for an abortion, but they refused to discuss anything with her because of SB8. She implored, well, if this is an at-risk pregnancy, I have four other kids that need me, that are alive right now, that need me. What happens if I die because of a blood clot? They still refused to talk to her about an abortion. The only person who offered her any information about abortion was the OB who, as she said, didn't even tell me. She wrote it down in a book after her shift was over. Dr. Munoz in Texas faced an awful predicament with a recent patient who had started to miscarry and developed a dangerous infection. The fetus still had signs of a heartbeat, so an immediate abortion, which is the usual standard of care, would have been illegal under Texas law. He said, we physically watched her get sicker and sicker and sicker until the fetal heartbeat stopped the next day, and then we could intervene. The patient developed complications lost multiple liters of blood, and had to be put on a breathing machine. A doctor in Wisconsin said, the woman begged me, if it comes down to me or the baby, I need you to pick me. I have two babies at home that I have to take care of. As you can see, extreme MAGA Republican abortion bans mean serious consequences for our health and fundamental freedoms. We're already seeing the impacts of these dangerous laws in states across the country. And in a post-Roe America, MAGA Republicans have made it clear that this is the reality they want to see nationwide.